the quest for justice in the murder of 16-year-old Matlomula Muswewu continues as the family is now suing the alleged killers. Muswewu died in custody of two farm workers who allegedly caught him stealing sunflowers in Kolini. This was in the northwest province. Back in 2018, Peter Dorevat and uh, Philip Skitter were convicted for the murder of the teenager. They both filed an appeal with the Supreme Court, which found that the state had failed to prove its case beyond reasonable doubt. Godrich Gadi is the legal representative of Matlomula Mosuewu's family, and he joins me in studio now for an update on exactly what the legal strategy is going to be. Uh, Mr. Gadi, thank you very much for your time. Before we get into the nitty-gritties of how you're going to fight this, let's talk first about the Mosuewu family. How are they doing? Good to be with you, Tolim Kambi, after such a long time. Greetings to our, view, our viewers. We have been with the family for the longest time, mm -hmm. uh, keeping in touch with them, uh, taking them through some counseling. They are not doing well at all. The mother always breaks down every time you meet her for a talk and for a pep-up talk mm -hmm. to take this matter forward. They are not doing well at all. It's been six years since this case and part of the reason that Mashomula Mosuewu's mother, Agnes, is not doing well, as you say, is because she feels that she was let down by the criminal justice system in South Africa because the two people that she thought were responsible for her son's death, they were later acquitted by the Supreme Court of Appeal. And these are the very people now you are going after for civil claim. Tell us how much the family is seeking before uh, we get into how you are going to tackle this case. As a matter of fact, Tolly, we are not privileged, uh, rather we are not uh, in a position to tell you how much we are claiming on behalf of the family, but several millions in that regard for trauma, mm. grief, emotional uh, pain, and funeral cost. We are taking up the matter with the High Court in the Northwest in Mahikeng, and um, we will be pursuing it with aggression. We are of the opinion that we have got all the facts on the side of the family to take, uh, to take up the matter with the court and uh, successfully uh, prove uh, civil liability, not only of the two accused, mm. but uh, on a vicarious liability also to the farm owner and the farm as a company. So we've got four defendants in the matter. So it's worth reminding the viewers of exactly what happened here, and we're going to paraphrase as we move with speed. It's been a long time. The two, Philip... Uh, Skitter and uh, Peter uh, Dorovat, they were initially convicted of the murder of Mashomolo Mosweu, but they took the matter to the Supreme Court, and at the Supreme Court, the court said the court in the Northwest relied on one witness whose testimony was not exactly as solid, and therefore the police having not done their work as well as they should have, based on those facts, the two had to be released. And so those are the very same people now you are going after to claim massive amounts of money. Tell us how you think you are going to have or bring a solid case against them given the facts that I've just given. Well, the Supreme Court of Appeal had three judges hearing the matter. Yeah. All three were not unanimous on the verdict, the final verdict of the Supreme Court, except in one instance or the other. And uh, in all the three judgments of one court, the SCA, uh, the court do acknowledge that the police bungled the case mm. in that um, they only went to the scene of crime three days later as a result of community pressure 
Ordinarily, the police were not interested in the case because apparently the family, the owner, uh, and uh, the white community of that uh, Colleen are in charge and they've captured the, 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 the state uh, in, that, uh, in that town of Colleen. They own every property, every street, and every farm, and every land, and the police are, are eating from the hand of the, of the whites, the, in particular the, 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 the farm owner and the, and the, and, and the workers of the, of the farm owner, Pete and Philip. And so, based on your case, there, there was no denial in court, and you'll correct if my, my facts here are a bit uh, touch and go. There was no denial from the two that they were in custody of Matlomula Moswil because they're saying that they caught him allegedly stealing sunflower heads. They then put him on the back of a bucky and they drove. It is their version that they assume he may have jumped off a moving bucky and upon realizing this, they did try to seek medical help or perhaps they didn't. I'm not sure you'll remind us of that. Uh, but is that what you're going to rely on? The fact that they do not deny handling him at the time and therefore having been in their custody, Matlomula, according to them, jumped off a moving vehicle and subsequently jumped to his death. Is that part of what you are going to rely on? In their own vision, Koli, um, the accused say they've done it before with many others whom they have found allegedly stealing sunflower. Mm -hmm. So they are known in the police station that they actually do bring accused or suspects to the police station. Mm -hmm. However, the courts have emphatically put it uh, in the three judgments of the SCA that an arrestor has got an obligation to the RSD, one of which is the duty of care. You can't put a kid of 15 years at the back of the park and two adults drive together uh, in the front of the car and care less what happens about the person whom allegedly they are taking to police station. They were not taking him to police station. Mm -hmm. They knew what they were doing. That uh, uh, town is known for murder of Africans by white farmers. And uh, Moshe is uh, just one part, the statistics. Um, on their own version, we think we will prove uh, uh, on balance of probability that they were responsible for the murder of Moshe. Remind us of where the family lives right now. The picture you painted earlier of a community in its entirety, including the police, who live off the hands of the farming community there. Where does Matlomula Mosuevo's mother live now? And if she is pursuing such a case, is it safe for her to still be in that community or does she live elsewhere? They live on and off from the farm and in the nearest village and the government actually built a house for them instead of taking further the matter of uh, 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 suing the state, uh, suing the, 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 the farmer and the, and the employer and the, and the accused. Yeah. They built them a, a nice house, there was fun fed in opening of that house and um, to that extent they are doing well except for the fact that they have lost uh, their um, loved one and the siblings was too young to have uh, seen what happened to have uh, experienced what have happened and they always uh, relapse whenever we come to visit them to talk about this matter it was a painful period not just of that community because it whipped up the, the emotions of the entire nation because in part there was that racial element that reminds South Africans, every time a case like this comes about, of the painful past of the apartheid era we come from, why have you chosen to help this family in this way? Clearly, it's just one part of the many families that at Gadi Atenis we are helping mm. to seek justice for their loved ones and for all human rights uh, that have been infringed 
and the terror that has been unleashed on them. We've got quite a number of uh, matters in the Eastern Cape uh, where the government just uh, went into a village, dug holes uh, for pit toilets for that matter, not even flushing toilets, and never uh, 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 built the toilet. Rains came, it was filled up, and the old man who is a resident of that land tripped and drowned today. The twins who passed away in uh, Eastern Cape were in the contractor and the state. Uh, the municipality did not uh, rehabilitate the land after taking a gravel uh, soil. And uh, it turned out to be a dam of some kind, artificial one. And when the rains came, uh, the kids went there to play and the, it was not protected. Uh, for the uh, danger far in Gozi for the kids not to come closer there. And they drowned. And... Uh, uh, in KwaZulu Natal, we've got a case of a child who was uh, told to go back home to get a mask at the peak of COVID, even though the, uh, the, the school knew that the child must go through seven kilometer bushes and mountains, and the poor kid was raped. And uh, it's one of the litigations, the issue of uh, the Moshe family that we are taking on as the Kaji Atenis. Mm. And we intend to take um, much, um, uh, uh, quite a number of them throughout South Africa and litigate on, the, on behalf of blacks and Africans in particular, because black lives matter. And that comes across as a law firm whose intention or whose intentions are, that, are those of a, a good Samaritan. But having said that, we have many instances in this country of people in your profession who approach families that have been wronged, and genuinely so, by the state in some instances. I can talk about medical negligence cases coming out of the very Eastern Cape you're talking about, but those families do not get their monies. Can we trust, not, I'm not talking about the Gadi attorneys, but can we trust, can we still trust in the legal profession to do what it says it is going to do on behalf of these families who have suffered such grief? Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, um, um, clearly, the latest report is that over 10,000 attorneys and law firm are before the Legal Practice Council for such a misconduct of withholding money due to victims in the road accident fund and medical negligence and other similar instances wherein uh, uh, victims have to be compensated. Mm. It will be an ongoing struggle. But uh, we try to be a team that actually commits itself that such a thing should not happen uh, uh, in our proximity. But uh, clearly, just take note that in most instances, it's when uh, law firms have got touts. Touts are like... Uh, Salespeople, people who, who go out who there go, to seek new business. Yes, they go to wards of paralytics, of people who have got broken bones and ribs, still uh, get their files, they connive with the nurses and the doctors. And uh, in the police station now, we've got a lot of so called uh, unlawful arrests because some constables and police, they always give this information to some uh, street lawyers who really cannot uh, actually do any other thing than to keep on uh, frivolous uh, 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 lawsuits of unlawful arrest and so on. And uh, we're not in the business of using touts and uh, getting information from inside. We get approached by communities, we get approached by families. They've heard about uh, our services throughout the, uh, the country. We're big in Twitter and social media, and uh, we are giving them justice where it deserves, including some of uh, your colleagues who are actually victims of uh, 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 shootings during uh, coverage of uh, uh, protests. Final question to you. So um, the people that you are now going to be litigating against, have they signaled an intention to defend? 
Yes, we just received an intention to defend and with a certain notice called Rule 3514 notice wherein they ask for some frivolous documents for them to be able to plead and such documents actually not even relevant for the purpose of pleading. One of it is they are requesting a, a copy of an employment contract because we allege that Philip and the and, and Peter are employees of the farm and they're now requesting for the copy of the, contract, of the employment contract from us uh, and the family to, to, so that they can be able to plead. It's so frivolous, it's just a, a, a procrastination a, a, a strategy by the, our opponents but we are up to the task. They're even requesting for funeral receipts and uh, I mean those things you can get them to, during the, what is called the discovery a, a stage of, of the litigation. You do not need a receipt of a, a funeral as if you doubt that there was a funeral. Mm -hmm. As if, you, I mean, you ask for an employment contract, how can a family have a copy of the employment contract of the accused people? I mean, they're just being frivolous, but we're up to the task to deal with it. Godrich Gadi, let me thank you very much for your time from uh, the Gadi attorneys, a legal representative of uh, the Mosueo family, their son died in 2017 off the back of a moving bucky when the people allegedly responsible for his death claim that he may have jumped off that moving vehicle. That story still reminds us of the ills that afflict this society many a time.